Legacy Kids, I have Lena here with me today to introduce our new theme for the month of May, Trusting in God. And our verse this month is from Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. And it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will direct your paths. So in order for us to introduce this verse, I came up with a little game where we have slips of paper inside this mug that are either going to be parts of our verse or actions for us to do. You can do this at home. If you want to look up the verse and write it on little pieces of paper, then you can imitate this and do the same thing. And it, remember, it's Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. So we're going to take turns pulling out a piece of paper and we're going to read it and we're either going to do what it says if it's an action, or we're gonna try and put the verse in order based on the little clips that we have here. All right, I'll go first, Lena. Our, my first bit says, pretend to fall asleep. So I'm gonna pretend to sleep while you pull out the next one. Trust in the Lord. That probably goes to our verse. So I'm gonna put it here until we have more verse slips. Is it my turn again? It's your turn. Here we go. First, 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 first. Stand on one leg. <laughs> All right, keep going, Lena. I'm standing on one leg. Hug another player. <gasps> Aw. Hug me. My turn. Whoa, if I can get it unfolded. And do not lean. And do not lean. I'd say that's part of our verse, so part we'll put it verse. over there. Oh, it's your turn, sorry. <laughs> With all your heart, definitely part of our verse. Here we go. Do the floss. <laughs> I'm gonna floss, I'm gonna stand here and floss. You keep sorry, going. Don't. Your paths, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. That uh, is probably the end of our verse. It definitely sounds like part of our verse. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Your turn. On your own understanding. That's part of our verse. Yeah. We're going to put it over there. Do a silly dance. That's not part of the verse. No. I have to do a silly dance You have dance to do a silly now. dance while I think. And he will make straight. We're going to put it right there. Yeah. Your turn. Okay. In all your ways, acknowledge him. That is also part of our verse. Probably right there. There you go. Perfect. Well, last one. Spin around three times. Two, three. Are we out? We're out. Okay. So, you want to read it for us? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path or make straight your paths. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Now, I'm going to take a picture on my phone and you can use your, maybe your mom's phone. And I'm going to post it or send it so you guys can see that I got it right. We got our verses in order. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. See if you guys can do the same thing from home. So the past few weeks, we've learned about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And if you remember a couple weeks ago, Jacob's name was changed to Israel because God promised him that he would be the father of the Israelites. And the Israelites began with one really big family. Jacob, after his name was changed to Israel, he ended up having 12 sons and daughters too. He had so many kids <laughs> and that's how the nation of Israel began. It mostly, the Bible mostly focuses on the story of the boys because they were the ones that carried on the name of Israel. But this week we're learning about one of the youngest sons, Joseph. Do you have siblings? Any brothers or sisters? I do. I have an older brother named Titus and a younger brother named Lucas. And I seem to be jealous of them all the time. Maybe you've been jealous of your siblings too for one reason or another. Maybe things aren't fair and it seems like your mom likes your sister more than she likes you. 
For me, I always felt like Titus was smarter and cooler and I could never be as cool as he was. And then my younger brother, Lucas, I felt like since he was the baby, I would never be as cute and cool as he was. And I was just stuck in the middle and it didn't make any sense and there wasn't anything special about me. Now, I'm not jealous of them anymore. As we've grown up, we've realized that we all have our own talents and our own skills. And our different things have come in handy. And I love them both very much. But there were definitely times when we were growing up that I was jealous of them. Joseph was the youngest. He had 10 older brothers. And even among all those kids, Jacob, Israel, their father, loved Joseph the most because he was the baby. He was the youngest. He was the most pure. He loved Joseph's mother, Rachel. And so he gave him a special coat, a coat of many colors that made him better looking than any of his other brothers. And they were all jealous and angry. We start our story of Joseph in Genesis chapter 27. Genesis is the first book of the Bible. And if you flip over, or actually in 37, I misspoke. It's chapter 37. It's the big 37, my Bible. And we're talking about how Joseph was loved so much by his father and how his brothers were super jealous of him. And what made things worse, Joseph started having special dreams, different than any of the dreams his brothers have ever had. His first dream talked about sheaves of wheat, so like bunches of wheat. And there was one special one and all the other ones bowed down to it. And then he had another dream with a sun and a moon all bowing down to one of the stars. And then there were also 10 other stars. So it was like the 10 stars represented his brother. He was the big star. And then his mother and father were the sun and the moon. And if he kept having dreams that he was more important to, than them and that they were all going to bow down to them, to him, they probably weren't very happy with that. Chapter 37, verse eight says, his brother said to him, are you indeed to reign over us? Are you indeed to rule over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. And then when his other dream happens, his second dream about the sun and the moon and the stars, his father says in verse 10, what is this dream that you've dreamed? Shall I and your mother and your brothers indeed come and bow ourselves to the ground before you? And his brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the saying in mind. So his father remembered. He kept in mind that his, his son, Joseph, was the most important. But it just made the older brothers even more angry and jealous. And they would have heard about God from their dad because their great-grandfather was Abraham and their grandfather was Isaac. Their father was Jacob. This God of faithfulness that we've been learning about was a big deal in their house. But remember last week when we talked about the Good Samaritan, just because you know all about God doesn't mean you're always going to do the right thing. Joseph's brothers were so jealous, they decided to kill him. Down in verse 18, we pick up our story. So we're in Genesis 37, 18. Jacob, their father, had sent the older brothers all out to do work in the field, but he let Joseph stay home and do nothing. He might have been doing schoolwork, he might have been helping around the house, but still he wasn't out in the hot sun with the rest of them, therefore setting him even further apart from the rest of them and making the boys even more angry and jealous. And one day, Jacob sent Joseph out to go check on the brothers. He said, go out there and check and see how they're doing and run out there and then let me know how, the, how everything's going. So he went out into the field and they weren't there. So he had to go even further away and he kept traveling. And then he finally came upon his brothers. And in verse 18, it says, they saw him from afar. His brothers saw Joseph coming. And before he came near to them, they conspired against him to kill him. They said to one another, here comes this dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. 
Then we will say that a fierce animal has devoured him and we will see what becomes of his dreams. So they're basically saying, he thinks he's so important and he's gonna be a ruler, but he can't rule over us if he's dead. So they decide that they're gonna kill him and they're gonna take all his clothes and they're gonna throw him into a pit to die. And, but when Reuben, one of his oldest brothers, heard this plan, he rescued him out of their hands and said, let's not take his life. Don't kill him, he says. And do not lay a hand on him that we might be able to rescue him or restore him to father. He said, maybe you're just angry. We'll throw him in the pit for now. And then later, if we want, we can go back and get him and take him back to dad. But don't kill him. And in verse 23, it says, when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe and the robe of many colors that he wore. And he, they took him and threw him into a pit. And the pit was empty and there was no water in it. So he was stuck down there with no water, nothing to eat, nothing to drink. His, father, his brothers had taken his clothes and he was thrown in there all alone. Which our bottom line for this week is when you feel alone, you can trust that God is always with you. So that was their plan. They were done. They had left Joseph in the pit to die or maybe to come back for them if they changed their minds. In verse 25, it says, they sat down to eat and looking up, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels bearing gum, balm, and myrrh on their way to carry it down to Egypt. Then Judah, one of the older brothers, said, what profit is it if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother, our own flesh. And his brothers listened to him. And the Midianite traders passed by and they drew Joseph up and took, lifted him out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 shekels of silver. They took Joseph to Egypt. So it says that Judah said, how about instead of leaving him here to die or leaving him here and then coming back to get him later, why don't we at least sell him and get some kind of profit? If we sell him to these travelers, then we can make some money off of him. And then he's out of our hair and we don't have to worry about him dying or us feeling bad about anything that we've done wrong against him. So they took him. It says they took him to Egypt. And so Reuben helped a little bit because he kept them from murdering their brother. And then Judah kept them from leaving him in the pit overnight. But they still weren't doing the right thing. They still were mean to their brother. And it says later, Reuben returned to the pit. Like he went back to get him. And they saw that Joseph was no longer there. And he tore his clothes. They ended up taking the coat that Joseph was wearing and they covered it in an animal's blood so that it looked like Joseph had been attacked by wild animals. And then they gave it to their father and their father had been tricked. They didn't want to tell their father they had sold their brother. So they just gave him this and said, here, this is, this is what happened to Joseph. I'm so sorry. He must've been attacked while he was out in the field and it broke their father's heart. But meanwhile, in chapter 39, it says in 39, chapter 39, verses one and two, Joseph is now in Egypt. It says, Joseph had been brought down to Egypt and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, was the captain of the guard, an Egyptian, and had bought him from the Ishmaelites who had brought him down there. So once he, he was sold, his brother sold him to the Ishmaelites and then the Ishmaelites sold him to the Egyptians. And it says in verse two, the Lord was with Joseph and he became a successful man and he was in the house of an Egyptian master. So he's in the house of a master. God is there with him. Kind of sounds like one of his dreams is about to come true. He seems pretty important now. I don't know. We'll talk about that later. We'll continue his story another week, but that's the introduction to Joseph. He had been sold by his brothers into slavery, but even though he was separated from his family, God was still with him, taking care of him and still made him successful in a really powerful house. And this reminds me of our bottom line. Once again, even when you feel alone, you can trust that God is always with you. Even when Joseph was in that pit, even when he was taken to a land away from his home, 
He could trust that God was always with him. We'll learn more about Joseph's story as we go on. Go ahead and pray with me though. Dear Lord, I thank you for these stories that we have about how you were faithful to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and now Jacob's son, Joseph. I pray that we remember that when we feel alone, we can trust that you're always there. I pray that even though we know your word, that we remember to do the right thing. Even though Joseph's brothers knew all about you, they didn't trust you and they didn't follow you. Lord, may we remember to follow you in everything we do. I pray for us as we study these passages about Joseph. Pray for Pastor Ken as he's teaching the adults about Joseph and help us to learn from his story and how powerful you are and how you worked through him. In Jesus' name, amen. So this week for another little activity, we have these make it your own coloring stories where you can tell the story of Joseph on your own. And I'm gonna show you how to make one. You can either do it one right now, or if your family is about to go watch the big church service with Pastor Ken, then you can make this during the sermon because Pastor Ken is also teaching about Joseph right now. So you can still be on track with the sermon while doing this activity. I have mine split into four sections and then the title section in the middle. So let me show you how I figured that out. You can either draw it on by yourself or you can do a little folding thing like I do so that I have equal size portions. And I fold it in half this way. And then I fold it in half again. And then I take the inside corner, the one that doesn't have any edges, and I fold it into a little triangle like this so that it looks like this. And then when I unfold it, oh, my markers are falling off. <laughs> when I unfold it, it creates a little diamond in the middle. I don't know if you can see that, but you have one, two, three, four sections, and then the diamond in the middle. And then I usually go through and I go over those lines with the black marker first, like this. And then I have my five sections. And in mine, I wrote Joseph sold in Genesis 20 or 37 in the middle. So those, that's our title in the middle. And then you can tell different parts of the story in each of the boxes. So mine was part one, Joseph was the youngest brother. His older brothers, were jealous of him. So I drew his older brothers here, and then here's Joseph. And then part three, he had amazing dreams. So there's all the stars and the sun and the moon. And then his brothers sold him. So there's Joseph again, and he's sad. And here are the 20 pieces of silver that they got since they sold him. So you can do one of those for yourself. And I'd love to see it if you can send me a picture and you can retell the story in pictures in your own world. Maybe write a sentence and then draw a picture and you can use this little model to follow.